Summoners, welcome back. IPL 4 Qualifiers Round of 8. We are heading into Game 2 of TCM versus Curse in just a moment. I'm Hat Person, with me is Chowster. So let's, we, got, we got to go over Game 1. AP Cog. Yeah, AP Cog. It's, it's like a new NA thing that has come up in, mm. in recent weeks. and it's, it's actually, I think Curse has been messing around it for like a month. But no other team has really caught on. But just recently, like, people have been starting to play it more in, like, solo queue, and teams have been starting to try it out. Yeah. We actually, uh, uh, during, uh, during game one, uh, we, actually, we actually have Team Dignitas in the house, and, we, you know, they came on by. As, you know, I was getting all of my notes and stuff ready for this game. You know, asked me, he's like, oh, who won game one? I'm like, curse. And I'm like, it was, it, was, it was AP Cog and Nautilus, right? And like, yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, I mean, it's... it's I, I mean, I mean yeah, I, I, we didn't get a chance to actually watch uh, any of the Curse Invitational. Dignitas did win, though, 2-0. But uh, it seems like, you know, it just, this seems to be, like, you know, one of Curse's new things now. Like, you know, and Nautilus, new champ. Yeah, Nautilus. Yeah. He hasn't seen any competitive play simply because he's just been released. Yeah. But as you saw last game, like, the, the CC he's putting out is just, you get caught by Nautilus, you're going to take so much damage. He's just, yeah. the target's just standing still. Which is weird because, I mean, he was, actually, he was actually getting caught out. Quite early on in that first oh, game, yeah. as I was wondering, it was like you know, it's you know, you're getting caught in the jungle. You already got two, you already got two deaths. Is like, how are you going to be effective here? Yeah, I, I feel was wondering. Like the, the TCM had the early game advantage, and Crumbs was really the Nautilus was really really behind, but TCM had a had a few skirmishes that didn't go so well in their favor, and yep. he managed to catch back up, and that's what put him back in the game. Yep. So on that note, we are heading in to game two. So do you think? Um, so you know, near the end of the game, we were like, you know, how do you deal with you know AP Cog? So yeah, and, you don't and do there it. you go, and or you ban him. That's that's what you do. You ban yeah, him. <laughs> it's it's very hard to deal with AP Cog on the fly. You, you'd really have to use your head and just stop, sit and think like, how am I going to deal with something that at if the game lasts long enough and we're not ahead, spams yeah. at two K range. <laughs> and it's, it's not like light pokes too. It's it's really it deals a lot of damage. Massive chunks, just it's just like just complete chunks out of the side, just like biting them off. Might as well be. So Talon Shivana being banned by Curse. The same same as we're probably gonna see a Cassiopeia ban from them after that. And Shen also coming in. So it's it really like, the only real. Oh, Maokai actually being banned for Curse. Yeah, they're, they're actually just banning out the... Shivana is a really problematic jungler. So like, if you don't run a, a fast clearing jungler, Shivana can counter jungle you quite well. And also Maokai's early ganks at mid, like Maokai can just flash near you and, and she can snowball the the mid laning in, in, in the enemy team's favor. So they want to get rid of that. So do you think uh, Curse is still going to go... With uh, with this not with an Nautilus pick because I mean we've we've seen you know we've seen the synergy that they've kind of developed around Kogma but do you think that their team kind of falls apart without Kogma? Uh, no, because I think I mean they they do play many different champions and like Kogma is the only, is a one of a kind champion and that her his poke is such it's such an extreme poke that no other champion can can really match it mm. so. If they pick another AP, it can be. It's probably going to be Rise or Morgana. I actually think, or Vegar. They actually CRS actually Curse really likes Vegar. So. Yeah, yeah. We've we've seen the uh, Night Jackie Vegar before. Um, I was also thinking. Um, do you think that uh, Zareth might also be a possibility? No. Uh, as far as I know, no competitive AP player in in NA actually plays Zareth. Outside of the like the really the top like the mm. top four or five teams, maybe maybe some of the the lesser known teams play Zareth, but. Uh, for like the top four or five teams, that they're, they're, I don't think they play Zareth. So misfortune, Janna for TCM coming down, and we have uh, we have York once again um, with Corky. Uh, do you think I mean, does he work uh, also as a good support with Corky as he does with Caitlyn? I think York was more so the fact that they picked MF Janna right mm -hmm. away, so they're deciding like what. Like what other support is Corky left with? Like Tarek's not going to work too well right here, mm. and uh, Alistar is also not going to work too well right here. They and then they see like what well, guess what? York is is has so much poke that he can even whittle down a Soraka lane, mm. and that's a Janna lane. They have absolutely no sustain whatsoever. So if if York plays it right and he doesn't get harassed by MF too much, they can whittle down the enemy lane before they can do too much harassing. And Nivia Ash wow. potential. What? 
Wow, they're going to run... I'm not sure if they're locking in right here, but yeah. if, if that's true, they're probably going to run Janna Ash bottom lane, and they're going to put MF in a solo lane. But no, no, here we go. We got Ramus. Like here we go. Ramus is open. It seems to be more likely here. But um, Anivia has also been. Uh, I mean, uh, Anivia. You know, we haven't seen a lot of her played, but you know, we, a, a very few like AP mids like seem to have this like this this kind of like calling with Anivia. Like, what makes her what what, what makes her good with TCM's current comp? Well, they do need CC, mm -hmm. and they need, and Anivia does provide a lot of CC. She has an AOE slow, she does have that wall displacement, yep. and she does have a ranged skill shot that can stun. So it's actually, it's a nice zone of slow, at least. Even if she misses all her skill shots, she's still going to have that, that area of CC that they need. There we go, Nye Jackie getting Vigar. Oof. We're going to see... We're gonna see a good show. We're gonna definitely gonna see a good show with it because we we've we've seen this Vigar here before in Killing Spree. It's very impressive, and I think you know, it's specifically against Anivia too. Like just that ultimate is gonna be doing quite a bit, and then uh, Gangplank being gonna be also being picked up on Curse. So I mean our lanes are pretty much set. So I mean, we are we are gonna see the support Yorick once again. So I mean, what I mean well specifically. Like, do, we all, I mean, we're, we're very familiar with Nijaki that, you know, he kind of has, you know, a little bit of favoritism towards Vigar, and it works. But, I mean, what other, like, what what what, uh, what situations would you usually pick Vigar? Uh, it, usually, Vigar actually works really well against most AP carries. It's just general, and also, like, that zone of CC, like, if you want an AP carry, if, like, a single target threat, like, someone like Ari, someone that's mobile, that can get caught by stun. Yeah. Like, like, eliminating one threat, that's what Vagar can do for you. Yeah. And if, you know, you have Ari going around or you have an anyone that doesn't initiate as an AP carry that starts up with initiate is, can technically be just taken out by Vagar. Yep. And also, like, even, like, we, we have Skarner. So Skarner actually has to get, you know, somewhat somewhat close quarters in order yeah, to nail also, the combo. So yeah. Vagar puts out a stun and Skarner can't move anymore. Mm -hmm. So... So I mean that pretty much like ruins. That pretty much ruins Skarner's day. I mean mid's gonna be a very hard lane for Skarner to go after. I think you know bot is actually all three lanes are very rough for Skarner because you know, we have Gangplank gonna be up top with the oranges. Bot lane we're gonna have York, you know, with the ghouls for the slow to yeah. keep him from getting the engage that he needs. I mean he really can't do a worthwhile engage on most of these lanes without flash. Without having you know to flash yes. into either surpass a stun or get past slows of some sort, I feel like the the best lane to gank right here would would have to be bot lane, bot or top. But mm. top the when you look at element summoner spells, he doesn't have flash. So yep. actually, if uh, if TCM wards their own brush with a pink and Garner does like a flash lane gank, there's absolutely no way that elements can get away mm. because he has no flash. Yep, and Skorky has no form of CC. So game is loading up. So uh, you know what? Game's coming in. Let's go right to it. These are the IPL4 qualifiers round of eight. We are heading into game two with TCM versus Curse. Curse is up one game. If they win this next one, they will be qualifying for IPL4 in Vegas. Just going to go ahead and recap the bans for game two. TCM has banned out Kogma, Shen, and Karthus. Curse has decided to ban out Talon, Shivana, and Maokai. And uh, you know what? We got Nia Jackie on Vigar, so that's always a good time. That's always a fantastic, entertaining time. And uh, after you know, following game one, you know, TCM saw what Curse can do with AP Kog'Maw, and they did just did not want to have to deal with that again. Yeah, it was just banned right away. Right, first man right out the gate, and so we, I, we, it's, we do have York again in a support role in bot lane. You gonna see how that works out, but uh, for right now, though, I mean. I think, you know, Curse has is, is definitely got another good comp for themselves this time, too. So we'll, we'll, we will see how it goes. So, right now, it looks, you know, every, you know, most, you know most standard, you know, uh, purchases here. Skarner looking to go for that quick feel because he needs, he needs to get that extra movement speed building in Shrelia's. 
York getting the wards he needs. He'll also be building them to a Philo later on for wards, site wards that he will need toward for uh, bot lane to keep those bushes visible. So right now, um, I'm, 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 we didn't uh, we didn't talk about Nocturne much either. So like, what is like what is Crumbs's place here? Because uh, most of these lanes are actually pretty good for him to gank. I feel he can definitely gank mid because if Daigar lands a stun mid and I think by Anivia is actually not picking Vegar into Anivia isn't the best thing to do because even even if you 100 to zero Anivia, she has egg. And she does. After you blow your burst on Anivia, like you're not gonna slowly Q and W whittle her down. You're gonna need your jungler to come and finish her off, or she's just gonna respawn. So I feel like they're gonna they're probably gonna blow flash on one gank, like one maybe one like one stun. Nocturne's gonna show up. They're gonna blow flash, and then they'll uh, come back like two, uh, a minute or two later, and they'll, they'll probably try to finish off Anivia. Or they'll force a team fight and just die of her. He seems in this bush. Elements actually very nice, preemptively putting down the ghoul to make sure that no one's there. But you know what? TCM was there. They prevented a very, what could have been a very disastrous face Oh, he took the check. big ray. Nice. Took the big golem. Nice. Good job on Elements. Holy crap. That was nice. That was good work. Yeah, no form of CC outside of uh, Nivia, and she was really far in the back. Yep. So Elements just went for it. Nice. Good stuff. Nijacky here, he's been mid the entire time, and now Skarner will go ahead and get his own blue. Nocturne making his way up. Crumbs will get his. Inky up top with Poe Belter, duking it out. So where does, um, so where ideally do you think we'll be seeing Skarner go right from the get-go? He, he's going he's gonna to head over to his red, and then where is he going to go from there? He, depending on how the lanes are, how, how far out the lanes are, he's I'm guessing his go-to lane will be top lane. Mm -hmm. But if he decides to go bottom, it's also possible if they're overextending. But it, it is a gamble to go bottom lane without being level 6. Inky and Pobolter are actually just letting it all hang out top lane. They're, they, they've already burned potions. Uh, Riven actually, yeah. you know, they, they've both they both went cloth five pot, so they're yeah. there for they the long run. They both already bone burned two potions at level yeah. one. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's just like just two yeah. UFC brawlers just going at it, like not, not without a care in the world or for their own personal safety. But you know, they have the potions. They can stay there for as long as they got them. Yeah, but they're they're burning through them pretty quick, and right now MF actually taking huge oh. chunks of damage from Cop. Got really low. Has to burn the potion, and inking in uh, Poe Belter. Healing up quite nicely, but uh, if uh, Valkyrie isn't careful, wow. you're gonna get slow and could could potentially die to and a game from not soon. Your caress is pretty good, and right now Farfane yeah, is actually GP setting up for the game. Yeah, really overextended. Deep. Yeah, but he's just blue pill. He in did time. just in time. Didn't even didn't even know it. Didn't was not even aware of the imminent doom that he could have been in. Generally, a lot of top laners, once the, the wave is pushed to such an unfavorable position, they're just going to back and buy wards because they don't yeah. want to deal with the pressure. Jantin actually uh, getting really low to Nijaki very early on. Nijaki still has all three of his potions, while Jantin actually has burned all of his. Just, just from, just to try and recover from the Vigar. Yeah, I actually don't know how that happened. Uh, I know Vigar reached level two before Anivia did. That could have been yeah. part of it, but I feel like Anivia gave Vigar too many free hits. But you, you get caught in that stun once. I mean, you're, you're, you're getting the entire, you're getting the entire lunch special from Vigar. And just, just every, every single skill is just gonna land with such ease. And, Riven uh, is out of pots, but GP still has one. Yep. So GP winning the war of attrition just ever so slightly. And right now, Nijaki's actually being engaged upon Farfane coming in from their own jungle. He just, Nijaki just walks right around him. Oh, wow. Just in time. Like, you, you know, Nijaki was about to run down over to their wraiths, but realized, like, you know, that's not quite possibly the best idea. He does have red buff. I'll just die slowly, so I might as well just make a beeline for the tower and manage to get there. And everyone is playing so risky. Like, ha like half health almost nearly across the board. Yeah, they're definitely not being passive right now in the lanes. They're trying. Yep. Wow, Nivia just got egged. Nivia just got egged by Nijaki from a very well-placed baby cage, but uh, will very, very wow. be getting he's away. Got a, he's got a town soon. Oh, he's yeah. just going to get flashed. She's getting beat too bad. She, she can't stay in meet. She can't stay in mid very much longer. Well, she's going to get completely chunked out. 
and just you know, Nia Jackie just landing all the critical stuns that he needs. So I mean, so do you think? So uh, what, I mean, what, what does Janton really have to do? I mean, it's very unsafe for her to even be farming at her own tower. And Nia Jackie just keeping up the aggression, just teleporting right back. Yeah, into he teleported mid. right back in, and that's what like <laughs> even if. Even if Vagar was losing early game, he would have just TP'd back, came back, and, oh, and yeah. he would be out of mana. So he that's why he took TP, because you don't <laughs> you don't have to have Ignite, but it's nice. Yeah. And right now Inky actually being putting the put uh, hurt on Poe oh, Builder. Wow. Exhaust and Ignite going down. Inky will a bit. Oh, oh shield almost. preventing the last little bit flash oh, from Poe Builder. Nice. Good. Good stuff. Nice shot. First blood going to curse. Poe Bolter just barely getting that uh, parlay off with that flash. Good job. So he will be staying top lane. I mean, he is pretty weak still. He probably should back. Skarner deciding not to, to uh, make his way up. He's going to go ahead and grab the wraiths while he can. The MF has already shot bot lane. Cop, uh, Corky hasn't went back yet. Yeah. But, you know, it's Cop, you know, he's keeping the presence in the lane. You know, getting the XP, getting the gold, last inning under tower, because, you know, without his presence there, TCM's just going to go ahead and keep pushing bot. And, you know, the you know, last thing they want is more damage. The last thing you want is, you know, free damage on your tower. Skarner actually getting spotted out in the river. And uh, Nia Jackie being ever, ever more aggressive mid lane. And look, I mean, look, look at the difference in creep score in mid. Nia Jackie is just... Near more so, more than doubled the creep score of Nivia. That is incredible. But uh, in the meantime, the TCM will just keep pushing on bot lane. Cop making his way back in. What did he buy? But uh, scepter and another Dorans. So he's gonna have. He's got. He's got a huge bunch of life steal. Yeah, Corky has no sustain right yeah. now. So he just bought a whole bunch of Doran blades, a vamp scepter, and some pots. Yep. And Doran's blade, you know, any Doran's item in lane is really good. You know, if you need just a little bit of everything, if you just need a little more sustain, if you need that health, if you need that damage, just a little bit of everything. Or if you're behind, Doran's are all wonderful items. And Inky, as you getting caught underneath the King Plank ult, has to flash out of it so you can get oh. away. Potion definitely helps save her. I feel like Poe Belter could have got the kill right there, but yeah. he's gonna play. He's gonna play it safe just in case the jungler is going to show up. Which I mean, it's a good call. I mean, you know, they're they're a little they're a little bit uh, they're a little bit ahead. They don't want to blow the lead, and you know, Curse is in a really good position right now. And you know, Nia Jackie's just completely destroying mid lane, and they're and the gold lead is actually quite sizable pretty early on. So they they have the, a very nice lead, and they want to keep it. So, and Nivia finally trying to get some it has to you know, farming with the ultimate in mid. Parfait is going back getting a red buff in jungle. Hope we see some more action from him coming very soon. We haven't really seen a whole lot of stuff from Crumbs. He's just been Yeah, Nocturne, I, I think he wanted to farm a fast six and now he's just looking for opportunities to gank, but mm -hmm. nothing's really happening right now. You know, well, I mean, while Crumbs is six, Farfane is actually still behind. Uh ju almost almost just about to hit six. So he's yeah. still got a little ways to go. GP is incredibly ahead of Ribbon right now. He has three Doran blades on top of Ribbon and lane. Mm -hmm. That's going to be huge. So, I mean, we, yeah, uh, Crumbs actually has a full level on Farfane right now. Farfane did get six. He does have the pull. Eyeballing Nijaki in mid wall going up from Jantin. Oh, wow. But not enough ignited. That's we'll get dead, the pull that is off. A dead and as it, yeah, Nocturne does come in with the. the ult. came up just in time. Oh, no. Crumbs now trying to get away. He does have flash. Spell shield. He's got the flash up, but you know he doesn't really need. He may need it now, actually. There he is. Oh, wow. Is it might be a little bit too late, oh, though? Wow. Farfane, can you get looks in? Like, can you get that last little hit? Looks like Crumbs. Uh, Crumbs? No. There we go. Okay. I feel like he should have wasted that. He should have flashed early. He would have yeah. gotten away, but he he got too greedy, and he's like, you know yeah. what? I don't have to flash. And then he <laughs> realized, like, you know what? Skarner actually moves really, really fast. I have to flash now, and then it was too late. Yeah, he's just, you know, like a little bit of a pride issue, too. He's like, I can make it. I can make it. Miscalculation. No, I can't. Uh, <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had a second thought. But, uh, I mean, even even with those two kills, I mean, Chris is still 1k up. It's not as big of a lead as they had before, but they are still somewhat ahead. Cop and Element's going to go ahead and push bot lane. Inky still trying to push Poe Belter as much as he can. And Farfane going to go back into the jungle, possibly make his way around mid.
But yeah, that was like the, that was the, that was the first, you know, real involvement we've had from Crumb so far. And I think, you know, maybe some attention towards bot lane might should be a little bit uh, beneficial to Curse. Farfane coming in on Poe Belter. Going to get all souls in need. Poe Belter's ult does go down. Exhausted on exhaust. Gangplank. And Inky might actually be wow, going Ribbon's down. Wow, going down. Whoa, right. Ribbon, can you stay alive? Show him going down. Nine Jackie teleports oh, wow, in. Teleport. Gets a stun on Farfane. Will he be able to make it out alive? We don't know, but Poe Belter oh, is just my. dancing around ridiculously low. Skarner, 200 health. Parlay, Parlay gets more damage. Parlay oh, gets it. That was a great TP by Vegar. But here comes Anivia. Jantin is not too far away. Wants, is hungry for that kill on Poe Belter, actually, but focuses attention towards Nijaki. Ice West does not get there. Stays in the middle of the baby cage. Anivia is actually out Poe of mana Belter. right now. No she's mana been, she's with going blue to go buff. Down. No mana with blue buff. Oh, my God. Poe Belter manages to fish off and grabs. Now has both buffs. I feel Ooh. like... I feel like Anivia shouldn't have casted that that Q. She had no absolutely yeah. no vision of the brush, and she just tossed it out there. And she she forgot that she was actually low on mana. Actually, yeah. I mean, granted, you know, the kill on Poe Belter would have been nice, but it's just kind of like you know, Gangplank, I'm coming to get you. No, you're not. I'm gonna walk in this bush. Like, well, yeah, that was such a good situation yeah. for Anivia. She could have just simply walked into the brush, and they wouldn't have been able to burst her down. Mm. Cast the slows, and once it slows out, you can land those skill shots. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's just Gangplank got a little bit too far away, and uh, Jantin was just, you know, content with just putting a little bit of hurt on Night Jackie, and that just came to came to bite him back in the butt. Uh, and now we have a four and oh Gangplank top lane with double buffs. Yeah, that's never good. <laughs> that is never good. He's level ten, Riven's level eight, halfway to nine. Poe Belter is you know almost halfway to eleven. So yeah, that's a that's a two level lead top lane. So right now. Gangplank is just going to go ahead and walk over top completely from this point on. Nijaki in mid getting the farming needs, but here comes Farfane. But uh, they can't really, you can't really gank this guy on his own tower. Bot lane TCM is actually still pushing ever, you know, ever increasingly. The curse is of winning the other two lanes outright. So they're trying to make up for the losses while they can. It's a 4k gold advantage in favor of Curse. And uh, Poe is actually being uh, pinged out by TCM. Jansen may not have any really to go. No crit on the parlay. And uh, Inky is trying now to evade the pirate, but may not oh, wow. be able to. Can we get They're the cage? Stun. Inky oh, just barely missing the, the Barely missing the baby cage. I feel like he, pan he panicked flash right there. Yeah. He should, <laughs> like, should not have flash right there. The stun nah. missed. There's no follow up possible. Yeah. Crumbs. Oh, what? 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 Was, I'm not quite sure what the purpose of the ult there was. He's trying to mm. try to make them panic. He's not going to mm. ult in because he he's, he's going to die. So yeah. he's, he tried to come in for the steal, but apparently, like, blue buffs right in front of your face. Even if you get ulted, you're still going to see it. Yeah. So. Poe Belter actually chilling in that bush. He, you know, the uh, TCM he's knows he's there. <laughs> he's just knowing he knows, <laughs> like, he knows he's coming. It was like, Inky, I don't think you want to be coming back around this way. You, you know, just, 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 just go around. Just go around. Just keep coming to the side door. No. GP's no. still here. GP still knows. No. He's yeah, just he's playing, just playing this <laughs> denied game, and it's kind of funny. TCM now, uh, MF actually getting oh, a little wow. bit too far out. Got Elvis caught gets by slow. York. Got caught, not, exhausted. No, was there. Heal going off may not be enough. Cop, can we get... Oh, Last wow. bit of damage on. No, you cannot. Elman's tanking the tower. That was close. That could have that could have been a kill right there. Inky, but Builder's still trading up top. And uh, now Curse is going to go ahead and get put their push on on front of this tower. The bot lane. I mean, Curse's Curse's bot tower is actually hurting pretty bad. They need to try and equalize the health on the turrets if they can, because TCM like they, pretty much TCM, their success rides on bot lane because both of their other lanes have already lost. So if TCM also loses their lane, they're going to be in such a huge disadvantage. Definitely. When, when three lanes lose, yeah. outside of getting, like, if you have a really, really good team comp and you, you guys play the team fight very well, it's possible to get back in the game. But mm. generally, like, as you see in solo queue, like, people lose all three lanes. You just feel helpless throughout the game. Yeah. And by the numbers, bot lane is actually even. I mean, the creep score is pretty much dead on. And now Crumbs is actually making his way down. But uh, he was spotted by a ward that just finished. That ward just expired in bot lane, so they know he's around. 
But Nijacki is oh. coming up through the tri bush. Inky will be stunned. Oh, oh, misses man. again. Nuts. And Nijacki. But is uh, just we might be able to burst him down anyway. Yes. Nijacki does get away. Quillbolter just uh, tanks that tower hit. Everyone's safe at bot lane. Elements trying to get away from Farfane. Scarter oh, wow, ult going down pull. on Elements. Oh, Summoner wow. heal going down. May not be enough. Elements does fall. But he's got his ghoul. He's got, he's, he has been revived somewhat. <laughs> Trying to do something, and it looks like Nijack e, is he uh, teleporting in? Yes, he is. Can we be able? Can, are we too late? We are too late to get the cage. Too late to get the stun. Can't do it. Top Jackie lane, Cobalter is actually pushing out, and Jansen comes up for the kill. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know how Cobalter died up there. I believe he just <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> he was like pushing. AFK farming. He's like, you know what? No one's gonna come get me. Like, yep. And look, look at their middle lane. That's that's why Cobalter thought he was safe. Yep, and they, Crumb's actually taking just, the tier too. He died, and they got the uh, the second turret. That's worth it. Yep. We're seeing a lot of aggressive play here and Curses as ending out on top. And they've lost top and bot lane. Looks like they're gonna lose. You know, they've lost top and mid and it looks like they're gonna lose bot as well. So yeah, yeah, Curse is just right in a now. completely dominant position right now. TCM is, TCM's reconsidering what they should be doing right now. What, what can, TC, can TCM really do much of anything right now? Uh, they can still try to if they ever do get into uh, a dragon fight situation, they can try to have Skarner initiate, mm. maybe hopefully drag someone out of position. And if they can give one, it'll definitely be a lot easier for that team fight to happen. But as it stands now, it's it's really hard to initiate onto Vegar with a stun. So unless something goes horribly wrong, CRS is looking like they're going to take this game. Yeah. Hey, we still have yet to actually have like a full like five on five team fight. And right now, Pobolt are actually getting stunned by Janitin. The uh, oh, wall wow. going down. Pobolter flashes over the wall. Will get away, but uh, yeah, we haven't. We have yet to have like a full five on five team fight. And I mean, you know, by the numbers, Curse should be in a very dominant position when that happens. But you never know. Someone could get caught out of position. TCM may still have something left in them. Top tower yeah. being focused down by Riven and Nivia. Gangplank ult will go ahead and clear the creeps, so the tower will be attacking them just shortly. Things going on from Curse into TCM's uh, blue area. Elements pushing up mid, Nijacky and Crumbs bringing up the rear. And Pobelter's, yeah, wow. Pobelter's kind of like just like AFK farming a little bit. He's just kind of like, yeah, I'm, you know, what, what am I doing up here? CD yeah, they're going just down focusing all their, they're focusing everything on Pobelter yep. right now. They're trying to make something happen. His flash is down. He's got really nowhere else to go. He only has oranges, and they're probably not going to do too much. Nocturnal oh, wow. actually comes in, focusing down on Inky. Fear will go down. Crumbs is trying to make something happen. Anivia is trying to hide and in the Anivia rushes. And Anivia trying to run away from Nijacki. <laughs> and the cage gets her wow. blind in the bush. Wow. Good prediction from Nijacki. Wow. The egg will fall. Farfane, Inky, the rest of TCM is bringing up the rear, but they're a little bit too late to the party. But can they focus down Crumbs or Pobelter? Can they get someone? Can they get anyone? Shirelli is being popped by Skarner. They're trying to catch up. Baby Cage coming oh, down. Wow, Inky getting melted. Quite a bit of damage. Sword from Riven finish trying to finish the job. Does not be able to, cannot do it. MF ult goes down. Doesn't get too much damage. TCM, would it would behoove you to back off because right now, Cop is, tier, is trying to tear down your tier two turret here. It's really rough for TCM right now because they yeah. have a top lane ribbon, and that ribbon has absolutely no items right now. Like, yeah. GP just completed his wriggles, and Riven has not towned yet to get. I mean, just completed his Triforce. Oh, yeah. I'm mistaken. And Riven hasn't even just made her, her yeah. wriggles yet. Riven. <laughs> gang. Oh my wow. god. Pole Belter down has. Like 3, yeah, Pole 3, Belter. Gold difference. Three thousand gold difference. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Let's also take a look. Like Nijacky has a good like fifteen hundred over uh, Janet yeah, right now. Yeah, I mean, it's curses ahead by over eight k gold right now. It's only nineteen minutes in the game. Yeah, and just in you know like every single one of their you know matchups, like you know their AP, their AD carry is up a thousand gold. Their AP carry is up fifteen hundred gold. Their top laner is over three thousand gold. All three lanes have been won by a curse. And, you know, when you're at that much of an advantage, it's very hard to lose unless you're being, you know, get caught out frequently. Which, I mean, and Pole Belter just he keeps continuing to push top Once again, on his they're own. going straight for Pole Belter. <laughs> yeah, and because he's, he's solo, he's alone, he's on his own, he's got really nowhere else to run. But all the while, all the, while they're focusing their attention, trying to kill Pole Belter, their attention, Curse's attention is elsewhere, like pushing 
the remaining two lanes. Nijacky getting a little bit too uh, overzealous here, being focused down by Skarner. We'll be able to get away. Nocturne is not too far away. Ult going down. Fear going down on Farfane. He will be feared. Nijacky should be able to get the rest of the damage off. Oh, wow. This Stun in from Rumpkin. This could be very bad for Hearst. Ooh, Nijacky getting uh, walled. Focus down. Oh, wow. Proms is actually uh, getting a... Might not be able to live on this one. Fear does go, go down on uh, Slow AP. hits. He's dead. Slow hits. Crumbs is gone. Mm. TCM really needed that. They, they did. Were, it was looking really bad for TCM right there. That, that definitely helps, helps them yeah. back into the game. Even though they're still behind right now, that can give them a little hope. That is, yeah, it's a, it was a little bit of a, um, of a failed attempt at a split push from Curse. And just, you know, everyone just kind of got, like, picked off yeah. or retreated. But they are still in the lead. They still have a, a good, like, 7.5k gold lead. TCM is putting so many resources to kill pole belts up top, and Curse isn't doing anything to make them punish for it. The bottom right. tower is still up. Like, middle mid lane had zero pressure. Like, what yeah. is Curse doing? If if they're so ahead and, and pole belters overstanding that much, they should be doing something on the map, yeah. but they're not. They're not getting anything done. They're just allowing TCM to catch back up in the game right now. They're getting free farm in all lanes. So they, they need to group and they need to force something while they still have the lead. So what? I mean, yeah. So like, curse. Yeah, so should should Po Belter still be pushing top and Jay should just be like focusing on other lanes? What what does what does curse need to do to continue their push? I feel like curse should just force a dragon fight. Force the Baron, force the Baron. Start, get clear of the Baron area and actually just force it. You're not getting anything out right now, just just laning anymore, because they're getting caught and they're, they're, they're just not doing it. They're not, they're not playing with their advantage. They're just like drawing out the game. Mm. I mean, we have, I mean, we have seen this, you know, from other NA teams where we just, you know, draw out the game, you know, keep continue farming, get your advantage and just, you know, work it out to late game with ridiculously farmed champions. But all the while, while they're continuing their farm game, TCM is slowly but surely catching up. But right now, Curse is actually going to go ahead and take down Baron. TCM wow, is they're doing a, a no war coverage Baron here. Baron with Vega out. And TCM actually notices that th that only one person is gone. And they're going to yeah. work real quick. But Baron that is a free going Baron. down. Free Baron. TCM Inky is going to come to a very rude awakening. Oh, dead. Dead. Riven right out in front, a little bit too curious. They have to Shirelia's away. Poe Bolter is giving chase. Gets, uh, just barely misses the stun from Anivia, and now Curse will start to slow push up down mid. So and they got they got the Baron. Like, they tried to force a fight at Baron. They didn't have it warded. So it's like, well, you know, if we can't force a fight at Baron, we'll just take Baron. It's just as good. So yeah, Curse they, is going to go they ahead and take down. They Vegar mid. They're like, we're not doing Baron. Like, Vegar is still middle lane. <laughs> oh, wow. NY Jackie just gets... Wow. Taunted gets, into the tower. Yep. Night Jackie just gets pulled right on in, but he is revived by York, so he's going to be doing a little bit more damage while he still can. Crumbs going out in front. MF ult wasted onto nothing. And the uh, this inhibitor will be going down. And I think uh, can Curse just keep on pushing mm -hmm. from here? No, they will decide to back off, play it safe. So yeah, now it's now it is defense time for TCM. They really can't go anywhere. And, you know, Cur I mean, Curse. You know, they have their Baron buff. They're gonna have it still for a good while. It's not even half done yet. They're gonna go ahead, take this dragon, take all the objectives on the map, and then restart their push once again after they've shopped. And we got we got three K gold, three K gold on Gangplank still to be spent. That is. Massive. That is quite a bit of money. But uh, yeah, TCM going to go grab their blue before it gets stolen. Zeke's Herald being bought on York. Atma's being bought on Gangplank. Curse is pretty far ahead at this point. So Inky coming up top lane. TCM is you know TCM is you know they have the right idea. They're not traveling. You know, they have, they have their group of four traveling in a very good bunch in Inky, trying to just clear his mate, you know, trying to clear the wave top lane. But they are traveling in a group, and that is good. And if they manage to catch a lone member of Curse wandering around. TSA, uh, TCM right now, they have some wards in their jungle, but they don't have it all wards. They're very, they're very wary of the top jungle right now. That's why all of them are grouping there. Yeah. They don't know that Curse only has 
to top right now with Vegar waiting in the brush. And the rest, the rest of the team is still bottom side. They, they're not, they're not doing anything yet. Yeah, I mean that is that is the the disadvantage of being forced to your own base that your ward coverage just goes absolutely to hell because you're being you're going to be counter warded no matter really where you put your wards and you're just left in the dark and that's the worst feeling in the world just having no vision no information until it's too late like when they're pushing down your towers or pushing down your inhibitors and Poe Belter actually poking out a little bit too far he seems trying to give chase. But since they don't have the ward coverage, they do not know that uh, the re where the rest of the team is. And split push going on. Crumbs actually taking the bot tower while the rest of the team takes top. They're going to continue to push in on the inhibitor turrets. Baron buff is about 75% uh, done. Right now, Skarner getting in a little bit of a, a, of a, tr of a trifle with Crumbs. Rest of Curse trying to push that target away for the next minion wave. And this is this is the slow push. They have the advantage. They know they can just go ahead and take these objectives if they just keep on attempting them. Stun from Nijaki going down. We caught Anivia. We're trying to dissuade everyone from engaging. Turret will just go down in a second, at which point the team fight will oh, wow. begin. Nijaki actually being caught. Flashes over the wall. Pole Belter coming in. Farfane, he, he pops to Shirelius. He wants to get his engaged. Oh, wow, flashes flash, in, flashes, gets Nijaki. Still dies. dies. Dies before his ulti. Gets to, gets to be actually used. They couldn't follow up on that ultimate. They were too, no. too deep. <laughs> and while that's going on, Kroms will just keep on pushing on. We're hitting the Nexus turrets. One's looks gonna like fall. GG. Next one's gonna fall. This looks like it. This looks like game. Crumbs. Elements. The all of, all of Curse. Fantastic job. The Nexus will go down. Curse Gaming. Your third team today heading to IPL4 in Las Vegas. Good job. Curse, wonderful stuff, and yeah, it's it's, and I'm and we have I mean we have two very solid teams here too. I mean it's, I mean impressive play still throughout the entire day, and I'm still I'm still reeling off just right after game one from Curse, but you know we will get right into the post game right after a few messages. So do please stay tuned. <laughs> 